Hello, my name is Mark Miano. I'm our VP of Sales and Partnerships here at Glue. And welcome to Glue Academy, video five, buying order spectrum analysis. A couple things, this is the fifth video in our Glue Academy series. These videos are designed and are layered on top of one another to gain deep understanding of our of how to become more profitable. So I will be using some concepts in some other videos, but here we go. Buying order spectrum analysis, BOSA. What we're gonna talk about today is the understanding of how to use a merchant's limited offering of products and services in the most profitable way possible. In other words, how do I use my limited offerings to attract the highest paying customers and to upsell those customers once acquired, right? Every company in business has a limited amount of SKUs. That's just the reality of the situation. Even Amazon, right, it sells everything. So how do I use those SKUs in order to accomplish the two goals that we outlined in video two, which is attracting the highest paying customers and then upselling those customers once acquired? Here are some questions that BOSA or buying order spectrum analysis can answer that are very common that, that we come across here at Glue and that you probably have come across yourself. Here, in what order do my highest paying customers buy things from me? What are the tastes of my highest paying customer base? What is my company's comparative advantage? I.e., what is it that I do best that no one else does as well as I do? <laughs> do free samples work? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, even inside a store. How do I attract the highest paying customers? How do I upsell my highest paying customers once I've acquired them? How do I transition a regular customer to a subscription customer? These are all really important questions and very tough to answer, and we're going to cover a lot of this today. The framework. So think of your SKUs on a spectrum, all right? Some products and services on one extreme of that spectrum should be used to attract the customers with the tastes that make the upselling easier and cheaper. The opposite of that are some products should be used strictly for upselling. Now, the challenge is in between. The more SKUs that you have, the more there will be a gray area where maybe a SKU in some cases is good for the attraction and sometimes it's good for the upsell. And that's the real challenge, right? Is the more SKUs I have, the more complex this particular analysis becomes. At one end of the extreme, we're going to talk about high lifetime value products, all right? These should be used to attract the highest paying customers. The two criteria that typically allow you to identify a quote unquote high LTV product are products with a relatively high amount of orders. So we're talking about causation and not correlation, or we have a statistically significant amount of data there and whose buyers have a relatively high lifetime value. So these are going to be the products that we're going to want to think about, right? My highest paying customers value these products. So let me go ahead and bait the hook with these particular products so I can attract customers with the tastes that make my business more profitable. Now, quickly, don't blindly present these products to customers first without thinking critically. And we're going to be thinking critically throughout this whole uh, brief demonstration. But make sure that you think critically about your business and don't just blindly follow the numbers, of course. Low lifetime value products. These should be used to upsell the highest paying customer that you once, that you now acquired. Um, think of like a phone charger, right? If I buy an iPhone, well, I'm only gonna use a phone charger if I have an iPhone. That's a pretty easy one. Now look at this. this I think it does a good job. So the green line is customer one and the red line is customer two. Customer one bought the iPhone first and customer two bought the phone charger first, right? A phone is a very high lifetime value product. Not only is it more expensive, but once I buy the product, it then triggers other purchases, right? Like headphones, car holders, phone char uh, chargers, all kinds of accessories. However, if I just buy the phone charger first, <laughs> well, I mean, great. I mean, what was that like? 
five bucks maybe, and now the person's gonna leave you forever. So again, you can clearly see that the lifetime value of the customer one is much higher than the lifetime value of customer two. If I come back in here, let's take a look at glue real quick. I'm gonna go to products list. And what I did is I pinned two particular columns. I pinned orders and I pinned the lifetime value of the product, all right? So what this number right here is, this is the average order value multiplied by the average purchase frequency of the people who bought the gray woven belt. Now, the higher the lifetime value of the product, like I said before, the earlier in the customer experience, you're gonna to wanna to tend to present that product in order to attract the customers with the tastes that make that upsell easier, that make the, the, your business more profitable. Now, you might think, oh, the gray woven belt, let's put this on our website, right? And let's go ahead and target the people who maybe came into my store and didn't buy anything. Let's go ahead and, and approach this customer base with the high LTV products in order to attract the right customers and not waste our time on people with the tastes which are unprofitable, but it only has one order, right? So that's not a very statistically significant number right here. All this tells me is one really rich guy really liked the gray woven belt. So the exercise to identify high lifetime value products will be looking for products with a high amount of orders and a high lifetime value, right? Because that's going to be a much better depiction of the tastes of your highest paying customer. Now, if I open up a couple ones, right, like the Megan Brown felt hat and the Ryan shoe, what I'm going to be able to see is what is called the product detail. And in the product detail, I want to get everything I need to know about this product and the people who bought this product in order to make as much money as possible. But let's take a look at one very specific thing. What is often bundled with this product? Wow. Okay. So I now know, look at the average order value multiplied by the average purchase frequency this purchasing customer's CSV file down here, the AOV multiplied by the purchase frequency of these people is 596. So I know they like me because they spend a lot of money with me. And now what I'm looking at is the nucleus of the tastes of my highest paying customer base. We're not just looking at the basket analysis or the bundling analysis of just any customer. We're looking at the basket and bundling analysis of the highest paying customers, and that is profound. For example, I work with a company that sells, um, um, I'm sorry, muscle mix, uh, like the flavored mixes that you drink in the gym to get super buff. And their highest lifetime value products were the um, blueberry and the lemon flavored. And that's good to know because we're gonna put that on the website and go to market with that and really push that to attract the right customers. But the most bundled product with those two particular uh, high LTV flavors was the non flavored light bulb moment. He was over flavoring his products. So, by reining in the tartness of the mix, he was able to fit his, his highest paying customers' tastes more effectively and grow his business uh, a lot quicker than he otherwise would be from a product development standpoint. Now, I will tell you this the tip of the spear will be the high LTV product. But what is often bundled with this product, this basket analysis, does feed in down to a dynamic customer level. So if I click into the customer detail here, I clicked on Cheryl's from this email, we're going to take a look at the basket analysis of everything that Cheryl bought, and then we're going to automatically assign the exact products that have Cheryl have the highest probability of, share, of converting Cheryl for the second, third, or fourth purchase. So this is a great automation, and it does pull in uh, through Klaviyo and MailChimp and, and some other email platforms that we have in the queue. Great. Now, let's talk a little bit about some case studies. Now that we've understood this uh, buying order spectrum, right? Um, let's talk about something that, that's a little bit more complex than the iPhone, right? Because the iPhone's an easy one. Case study three, outdoor wear. So, I work with a company that sells a lot of outdoor gear, uh, North Face jackets, socks, camping gear, et cetera. And what we discovered together through this buying order spectrum analysis was that their highest paying customers bought the carabiner. You know that little clip when you're rock climbing 
where your life depends on it? <laughs> well, what they discovered is that rock climbers were the particular individuals that had the highest lifetime value. How interesting, right? Now, in the e-commerce, it's important to specialize. And by understanding this comparative advantage, they were struggling pretty, pretty hard. They were plateauing in terms of growth. They were able to pivot and to concentrate and serve their highest paying customer base more effectively with intelligent campaigns and stocking up on the right products and uh, the right research and the right content around rock climbing in order to blow the lid off growth for their business. A second case study is the middle-aged woman's clothing company. What we discovered together is that when people buy the woman's pants, oh man, once you buy the pants, that unleashes many other purchases in the store. For some reason, the pants seem to be the staple where you don't buy as many pants, I suppose, but then you'll buy outfits and, and align your outfits around the pants. So they knew that when it came to customer service to serve pants customers first. Uh, on the website, they made sure to focus on the pants. And what they were trying to do is get as many of their zero purchase customers or their um, customers who are about to buy from them for the first time to buy the pants in order to lay down a strong foundation to upselling moving into the future. The third case study is a non-perishable food delivery company up in New York. And what we discovered together is that their highest paying customers had the taste for San Pellegrino. Uh, there's some free advertising for <laughs> Pellegrino there, but that might seem straightforward, but they had no idea. So what they do is on their website, front and center in the UX, they put the San Pellegrino, they push it, they make sure that they focus on their San Pellegrino customers and get as many people to buy that particular product as possible because the people who have the tastes for this product are the ones that continue to buy and even subscribe to them long term. Pretty interesting stuff. Let's get a little bit more complex today, okay? So this isn't so easy, uh, I'll be real. You might wanna write into Glue and talk to us a little bit about your data, but let's talk about the belt versus shoe dilemma. And what we're gonna be talking about is LPR and LR. So here's the situation. A men's high-end shoe company watched this video and followed the directions, but something didn't make sense. Their highest lifetime value products were the belts, not the shoes. Does that mean that this men's high-end shoe company pivots from making shoes to concentrating on pushing belts? Hell no, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, in order to look at the nuances of this buy and order spectrum analysis, let's look at the lifetime product revenue to lifetime revenue ratio. Lifetime product revenue is all the money you ever made off of a product ever. Lifetime revenue is all the money ever made off of all the people who bought the product ever. The higher the LPR to LR ratio, or i.e. the closer the ratio is to 100%, the more homogenous a group of customers' purchases have been, right? They've only tried one thing if that ratio is close to 100%. The lower the LPR to LR ratio, the, far, the farther the ratio is from 100%, or the more heterogeneous a group of customers' purchases have been. Let's take a look at two specific cases here, okay? So I have the wingtip brown shoe, and I, and I mapped out how to find this in glue.io to make it really clear. At the top, we have the wingtip brown shoe and all the purchasing customers for that. And you'll see the lifetime product revenue and lifetime revenue. And then at the bottom, I have the studded brown belt, okay? Um, you see the lifetime product revenue and the lifetime revenue. You'll see that the LPR to LR ratio up here is 70% for the brown shoe. Meaning 70% of the purchases, the people who bought the brown shoe came from the brown shoe. Look at the studded brown belt. Although the studded brown belt has a higher lifetime value, the brown belt only consists of 15% of this customer's purchases. It's a peripheral purchase. So let's take a look at this. The wingtip brown shoe had an LTV of 300 bucks. Like I just said, the LPR to LR ratio is 70%. The studded brown belt had an LTV of 500 bucks, but the LR, LPR to LR ratio is only 15%. This is the conclusion. Customers with more expensive taste bought the studded brown belt. Okay, they buy a belt and shoes. 
But the studded brown belt was only responsible for 15% of the overall cash spent with the store by the customers who bought that belt. The belt is a great upsell, even though it has a higher lifetime value than the shoes. Okay, that should be really clear. So how do we go, where do we go from here? And where we go from here is placing your products into categories. Here's a, here's a case study to demonstrate the point. I work with a company that sells stand-up desks. Okay, they have three categories of products, desks, chairs, and accessories. What they do is they perform this analysis for each category, right? They want to take a look at what desks attract the highest paying customer, what chairs attract the highest paying customer, and what accessories eh, kind of attract the highest paying customer. Just so you know, the accessories, obviously, using critical thinking and brain power, aren't going to attract the highest paying customer, right? A stand-up desk company is not an accessory store. It's not Office Max. Their comparative advantage is desks and chairs. So think about that, how powerful this is no matter what you're selling. Think about your website, right? What I'm going to want to find is the highest LTV desk, and I want to put that in my website, go to market with that, the highest LTV chair, and then I'm going to put the accessories that my highest paying customers value the most all on my website. Are you selling shirts, pants, and shoes for men? Look at the highest lifetime value shirt, the highest lifetime value pants, the highest lifetime value shoes, and create the highest lifetime value outfit. This is really important, guys, because this buy and order spectrum does apply, but we have to use critical thinking in order to use it properly. Here's another question for you. What customers do I turn to in my store to capitalize on my subscription strategy? Here's a cool one. Uh, for example, I work with a company that sells supplements, uh, all kinds of vitamins and stuff. And they, were, and they had this question. And this is a little bit different, very easy though. So what we're gonna do is look for high lifetime value, high order products per usual, okay? Uh, these customers like your store, right? People are buying the product a lot or, or, or high paid customers buy the product a lot. What we're then gonna do is we're actually gonna look for high LTV, high order products that have a high LPR to LR ratio. Right? What that would mean is that these customers, they like you and they're buying the same thing over and over again. Subscription, right? Stop coming here manually over and over again and buying the same thing. You really like me, you're trying the same thing over and over, go ahead and subscribe. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, definitely write in, please, because we'd very much like to consult with you on your own data. And I look forward to seeing you on the other side on video six, uh, attribution modeling.